while we're <laughs> while we're on the accurate. topic of Tucker Carlson, I didn't want to pivot too hard, but I was actually I saw your Twitter feed before we were doing this show, and I actually saw a hilarious tweet uh, that you put out about uh, you know somebody we we always scratch our head about and you know scorn a little <laughs> bit on 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 our show but you know Tulsi has had a very busy schedule since leaving Congress you know we talked about and in in, you know uh all of the you know just kind of the disgusting bill we called it HRJRE because it was so (laughs) obvious that she was reaching out to the Joe Rogan crowd with it where she was just like (laughs) slamming trans people in sports and like the biggest issue in the middle of a pandemic is whether or not some transgender kids get to play field hockey it's like fucking absurd Uh, it made me fucking super angry especially as somebody who in the past uh when uh you know Tulsi's been in the hot seat, has come out and said, you know, like, okay, you know, a lot of this has been unfair, but she just keeps making it harder and harder to come to her defense when she is correct, right? And I, mm-hmm. I just kind of wanted to get your reaction to that. As a as a leftist, you know, who, you know, sees somebody in Congress or formerly a member of Congress, you know, who was voting not to extend the Patriot Act, but who is also not a comrade, not an ally, uh, you know, to the vulnerable populations that we as a leftist are, you know, of course, going to, you know, uncompromisingly represent. Uh, so I'm just wondering how you how you f- react to that, you know, and, and, and what your position on all this is. Yeah, I think that you have the right take. Like, she's not a comrade. You know, she if you are a leftist, there's certain things that I think are non-negotiable. You you have to be an ally to trans people and vulnerable communities. You have to be explicitly anti-fascist. Like, these are just my standards. Like, there's no, like you know, pledge that we have to sign. But I think it's pretty obvious, right? At the secret Antifa meeting, you didn't sign the the (laughs) pledge. (laughs) I'm still reading it over. I'm having my lawyer look over that. Um, No, but like, so I think you bring up a good point. There was a reason to defend Tulsi Gabbard, I think particularly in the beginning of her presidential run, Mm -hmm. because there were a lot of, I think, bad faith attacks from mainstream media and the establishment. Like I covered a segment on The View where they were pretty like, I don't even want to say like rude, that just like, You could tell they brought her on to just like attack and you could tell that it was disingenuous. But ever since then, like she's taken a lot of horrific turns that are red flags that some people are choosing to ignore. Like the first thing was the BDS vote where she basically voted to silence dissent. I mean, this was a resolution sponsored by APEC that tells you everything you need to know. So that was like the first red flag. Then she moved away from Medicare for all. And now she's it's going on this Australian plan. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Which it doesn't make sense to me. Like why? Okay, well, Australia has this and they have private insurance. Every single single payer national health system has some elements of private insurance. No. But like, I don't, I don't want that. Like, we're trying to build a better system. We're yeah. not like, like, if you have private insurance, and you're truly anti capitalist, you know that those private forces are going to water down your plan. Like the minute we pass Medicare for all, it's going to be an attack nonstop to defend against it. And we're gonna have to defend that. So like, there are a lot of things that were extremely questionable. And the anti trans uh, bill to me was just like full mask off. So yeah. there, there's no defending, there's no plausible deniability. She's a fraud. Um, and and so grift, like, right? Is that is that the vibe I'm getting from you? I kind of I kind of see that like she started a podcast and she's going on these right wing tours. And to me, like, I I don't look if you go, I'm not one of those folks who think, okay, you went on Tucker Carlson show. That's inherently bad. It depends on what you say. Right. So like if Kyle Kalinske, Katie Halper, Numiki Konst go on and they push back on these programs and they promote a left wing agenda. So they basically tell conservatives the opposite of what they usually hear. I think that's incredibly useful and valuable. But Tulsi Gabbard isn't doing that like she is trying to build an audience and this is the folks who she wants in her audience she's trying to find people in the steven crowder audience the yeah she's trying to audience. do the brett weinstein thing where you where you do the whole i used to be a liberal and now they're so <laughs> crazy that i'm running to these fascists for hugs like yes. it's so it's so ridiculous right like you know uh gavin and i were just talking about like the tim pool spiral apparently tim mm-hmm. pool used to you know fancy himself a leftist you know but that's <laughs> not where the money it is money is right you know so yeah i i yeah I, i'm just wondering you know does it make you kind of And it it certainly made me, you know, backtrack everything because the first kind of, you know, positive, you know, reaction I had to Tulsi and the reason why I was like, maybe this is a person with principles was because she did stand up uh, for Bernie Sanders nominally. And, you know, and and I think now I I view it more as standing against Hillary Clinton than I do see it as standing up for Bernie. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, 
and, and maybe I'm taking this too far, but it sort of all unravels for me. And I'm like, does it all come back to this? Was it really you just, you know, taking a shot at Hillary Clinton and then realizing you'd created a lane for yourself that you could make yourself more popular with? You kind of compromised on the shit that wasn't super. I mean, I think I think she's just a contrarian in a sense and that she'll just kind yeah. of say whatever will get her in the news or, you know, make a headline. And she's ultimately just kind of interested in attention wherever that leads. And, and usually that leads to profit. So. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I think that might be as simple yeah. as it is, but it, it's certainly true that a lot of her um, rhetoric can kind of be seen in that light once you do start to investigate for sure. And, and yeah, I think yeah. I, I think there are legitimate reasons why people uh, were at one point drawn to her. I mean, she was one of the only candidates that used terminology like military industrial complex, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that, uh, things that I care about. So uh, that was, you know, an initial reason to get on board. And, and I thought she was bringing interesting, you know, conversations to the table at one point. Uh, but yeah, as soon as that anti-trans stuff happened, I was like, I thought you had this, uh, you know, I, I thought this was in your past, Tulsi, you know, as far as the discriminatory statements about the LGBTQ community. So I, I thought that was super yeah. disappointing, yeah. Yeah, totally. And and I don't fault anyone for, like, supporting her. I am a terrible judge of character, and I always give people the benefit of the doubt. But the minute there's a red flag, then I, like, you know, then I start to question. <laughs> yeah. Um. And I just, like, I, I saw a couple of responses to that. Like, man, I, I'm embarrassed for, like, supporting her and volunteering for her. But, you know, there's a lot of folks who will try to exploit your good intentions, and that's not necessarily your fault. I think that it's important to call out frauds like Tulsi Gabbard because it helps us, like, know what to look for in terms of, like, other folks. Because, look, it people do want to make money off of people's genuine, like, concern about the country. You know, there's a lot of bad faith actors who just care about the money. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that we have to call that out. And Tulsi Gabbard, like, I don't know what her motives are. I can't speak to that. But I can tell people that if if she's genuinely a leftist, then she's the weirdest leftist that I've ever seen and has some very odd things about her that I, I don't see. to do. She, yeah. Exactly. She's sus. She's yeah. sus. Yeah. As simple as that. Some, you know? Something that's interesting, too, that I, I observed recently on Twitter. I, I was, like, doing some snooping around on libertarian Twitter. And apparently she's super popular among libertarians. Like, uh, there's a whole segment of the libertarian uh, community or whatever that's, like, that's pushing uh, what's Justin Amash, Tulsi Gabbard 2024. <laughs> so. I've actually seen a, a Tulsi Gabbard, Dan Crenshaw, like, unity effort i don't know like i can't remember the name of the organization this was like in september when i saw it i was gonna make fun of it but i never did it's like this unity party that they wanted to like, create everybody that listens to the joe rogan podcast a little <laughs> too much is excited about that i'm sorry i don't mean to keep making joe rogan jokes but they write the, they make themselves when you talk about Tulsi they Gabbard. do it's like a very select group of people that are kind of like anti-establishment yeah relatively but it's popular. also like i still want to like hang out with this guy because he's a billionaire and like you know right right yeah yeah <laughs> 